Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble and I am excited to be here with my friends, Rubina and Scott Barker, who have a company called Robot Works that have created an awesome uh, solution for musicians. So we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but first, you know, the solution really came out of their story, like mm-hmm. their experience and especially Rubina's experience as a musician trying to uh, get into the music licensing world and the sync world and finding a lot of issues with the way she wanted to run her business. So we'll jump into that. But Rubina, can you give a background a little bit about you guys and especially you in the music industry? I know you've done some interesting things um, (laughs) in the like film and TV world. So definitely tell them about that as well. All right. <laughs> yes, claims to fame. Uh, well, I, I I was, it was a dark and stormy Thursday when I was born in 19, well, never mind that though. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I was born to musician parents. So both of my parents were, were um, very successful classical musicians. And so music was kind of part of my entire life. And uh, I, you know, was being put through the 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 gauntlet of different lessons and learning things and I was not a very successful piano student I really hated lessons and so mom being good mom let me quit and almost immediately after I quit my lessons I literally started playing 3 hours a day uh that's when my passion really took off for it but I was forever in the shadow of my very successful classical musician parents and kind of never really considered music to be a career this was a hobby for me and so I wrote all of this you know moody music and you know things that that, that I was would never have sold on the radio I, 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 and I thought well it, this is just going to be for me this is going to live within my headphones within my keyboard and was happy and fine with that. Well, fast forward that through life. And along the way, yes, I, instead of being a musician, I decided to kind of veer. I I was a creative person. So I veered into uh, film and television and I spent uh, a little over a decade being a professional actor and I, 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 what Bree's getting to. Yes. I was, I, my, my claim to fame is I was the live action reference model for Princess Jasmine in the movie Aladdin, a huge and wonderful experience. Uh, and, And quite frankly, an experience that to this day has kind of informed how I am pursuing my music career. Um, Understanding a little bit more about how the business worked has certainly informed an understanding of what I need to do to succeed in the sync music field, because it is still film, the film industry. It may be music, but it is the film industry when you cross into that sync licensing world. So anyway, so past that, after that, you know, segue, I I started becoming pretty much a serial entrepreneur. And uh, I I ran a few different businesses. And my last business that I had, I, I I ran a dog daycare uh, where I started with 20 dogs a day and I built this to a huge business that was, you know, 13,000 square feet and we were doing 110 dogs a day and God, I got to tell you, that's a lot of poop, just saying, (laughs) but yeah, so we had, I mean, we had grooming, we had training, we, you know, the, the whole shebang, which is, yeah, you know, that's another life thing for me. It's kind of the whole shebang, as you'll understand with track stage. But um, we sold that uh, five five or six years ago and we moved off to the island. And I was like, okay, so what am I going to do now? And I thought, well, you know what? Let's play with the music. Let's let's just let's just ex- experiment with that. And I had this 
uh, epiphany, as I'm sure, quite frankly, anybody who uh, used to write music in the analog way and had, and then to be introduced to the whole digital way of, of producing music, I, I'm sure this is a common thread where suddenly you go, oh my God, look what I can do. I can make music like it. I don't need to hire an orchestra. I can do this. And I, I, I just, it literally, I, I, so I learned, I, I had to go through learning d the DAW and I had to learn how to mix and I learned how to master and a lot of things to learn, a lot of a learning curve, but I got through it and it was a heck of a lot of fun. And so now I've got music that actually sounds great, but I didn't still never really thought I, I you know, I wasn't a, a singer songwriter per se. I was writing just moody music, different happy moods or not so happy moods, all sorts of moods. And then I happened on this, um, I don't know, it was a podcast by this uh, <laughs> noble, I think it was. Um, it, it was a summit and we're, we're, we're introducing all these different ways to make music with your money. And suddenly I was like introduced to what sync licensing was. And I was like, oh, oh my God, I might actually, this might not just be a hobby. This might actually be something I can make a living at. And so again, so I was really excited and I jumped into learning all about sync licensing. And so I took courses on it and I learned about metadata. I learned about splits and contracts and royalties. And oh my God, that's a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, a lot of overwhelm, but I, I'm like, it's okay. I can do this. I can do this. And I'm learning all about it. And then it comes time to start actually pitching my music and start to, to try to build my business. And I, so find the tools. I'm a business person. I'm an entrepreneur. I know I need, you know, I need to learn and then I need the tools to, to build my business. And so I'm looking over here and I'm going, okay, well, that's not a really great tool. That's, you know, okay. Oh, oh here, look, there's a catalog that the thing is, I can, I can put my catalog in here and I can do this. And oh no, that does, it's missing that. And no, oh, it's missing that. And, and it's already a little frustrating. I'm like, okay. So I really hate spreadsheets. I mean, I understand they are a necessary evil, but I, hate spreadsheets. I'm a creative person and a lot of horizontal scrolling and rows and rows and rows of information and data just makes my eyes cross and just not, it, it, it doesn't turn my crank, but I was like, okay, I guess this is what I'm going to have to be. <laughs> I'm going to be stuck in this world, but uh, no, I was, no, I'm, I'm a little stubborn. So I started, I found a, a CRM customer, customer relationship management uh, software that seemed to have bits and pieces of what this could be. So I, I, it had like a product section. So I could, okay, I can put my tracks in there as products. And then it had like this pipeline kind of thing where you're, you're, you're following, you know, for a sales process, but I said, okay, well, I can use that for my development, my music development from, you know, okay, well this, it's in the mixing stage or it's in the mastering stage. And so I started kind of cobbling this all together and it was ugly. It just didn't suit it because this was built for a sales, mm. uh, a sales pipeline. This was not built for an artist, but it was doing the job, you know, and I just, I needed to have everything in one place as much as I possibly could. And I, you know, it so kind of did the job. And then they did a software update and okay. they created, the, they changed the whole paradigm as far as the, the, as far as their tags in there. And I could no longer copy and paste my keywords. I would now, if I wanted to copy, put my keywords into anything, into, to, into, to tag metadata or anything, I would have to export a, a spreadsheet. We're back to spreadsheets and then go into metadata. So I had a little meltdown, little, mm. little meltdown and my brilliant husband has always, he's a, a software developer uh in his entire life and he professional at least i guess you weren't really didn't do it at five didn't no. do it at five okay well, god what was wrong with you um <laughs> but he so he had had supported us with apps for the dog business and and i thought well can you fix this? He'd always been looking for a project to build into it. And so I said, this, this is, this is the problem. Can, can you fix this for me? And, like, hmm. and hmm. well, so the long, the short of it, well, I, I guess it's the long of it because I've been talking for a while is three years later, 
after three years of working with other sync musicians and just emptying our brains and uh, designing the, the bejesus out of this, we now have that piece of software that I was looking for back when I was an overwhelmed newbie and couldn't manage to, to, to juggle everything. So now we have track stage. Track that stage is so was- cool. I know. I love, yes. I love the story. And first of all, I am so happy to be a very small part of this story. The fact that oh, like, yeah. I remember when we met for the first time and you're like, oh yeah, I was on your list. And then you did this summit. And I it. <laughs> and then I, I was like, that is so cool. Like, I love finding out this ripple effect kind of thing. Isn't that cool? It, yes. it really is true. You just never know where a pebble is going to drop and how it's going to to, to pan out that's right and then and then you meet the person in you know in person and then you know we have white russians together and go on uh, <laughs> kayaks together and stuff like that so you know it's, it's pretty cool how things like that happen on the internet so um, so <laughs> yeah but um i was also i know we met i think two years ago is that when we met yeah. so you were already a little bit down this road but it's amazing how yeah. far you've come since then and testing it on all kinds of musicians to make sure it's, you know, it's all doing all the things that everybody wants and stuff. So that is, that is really, really cool. And now you've got this, this thing that you can offer to musicians that is going to be the tool that they need. So tell me like, how did you decide what this tool needed? I mean, obviously it was based upon, you tried to build this thing in another in a sales pipeline thing and that didn't work out. But how did you know, like, oh, it's got to have this, it's got to have this, it's got to have this? Well, a lot of that came out of understanding what were the boxes you needed to check to make sure that your uh, tracks, you could use them if to, as you could use them in film and television. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, you know, as, as a musician, um, you think about the creative part. That's that's because that's where we live. Right. That's where our heart is. It's where our muse is. And so we live in the creative world. And then, you know, you think, okay, I've done that final audio mix down. Boop. And then track is done. Hmm. But it's not if you are a sync musician. That's like half the story. Uh, And and so, I mean, it's the way I look at it, it's like music business that it's everything is encapsulated in that word music business. You've got music, you've got the art and then business, you got the business. And so um, what I did is I looked at all of the different components that I knew that I needed as a even as a fledgling sync artist. And uh, and and I just wanted to make sure they were all in one place. That was that was the big thing for us is to have everything all in one place so that as overwhelming as all of the different bits and pieces, the metadata, the keywords, the splits, the royalties, the contracts, um, and then, you know, right down even to mix settings and production notes and, and collaboration notes, all of these things, instead of having sticky notes over here, whiteboards over there, spreadsheets over here, oh, I'm going to use we transfer for this, I'm going to use um, a disco for this, I'm going to use Composer Catalog, or I'm going to use all these different tools and I'm going to have it. No, I want everything in one place, one place so that I have one point of truth. And then um, Scott's wizardry uh, kind of took it to the next level. So uh, beyond it just being because most of these most of these um, software, most of the software platforms out there are either a fully online thing or a fully computer thing. So uh, but Scott bridged that and he made it both your hard drive being the point the point of truth and yet accessible from everywhere uh, to be able to, well, speak to it a little bit, my love. Oh, well, I was just going to back up for just a second. <laughs> and it gives uh, a bit of more detail on, you know, w- where you were going mm-hmm. with, uh, with respect to the overwhelm. And there, there is a, a lot to do when you think that, you know, you, you need to create your product you know, as in your craft as an artist and, and you do that. And then you think, Oh, I've heard a little bit about what I need to do. And it seems like too much. It's like, you know, how can I get all that done? Um, and then people did cobble things. People still cobble things together. I'll use a bit of this, a bit, a bit of that. Um, and so organization is important though. That's why we wanted to make track stage a single point. Uh, and so it was one place that you could go to one stop shop 
And that single point then leads to what you you just said, which is that um, when you get involved with <clears throat> this piece or that piece that's out there, or this service, that library, um, you start to lose track of, okay, now is that one over there in that one? Is it the right version? Do I have the right version? Wait a minute. I think that one's older because I got, I, I put it over here first in January. And so what we decided to do was um, to make your computer where your finished product is, your catalog, the sing, you know, your single point of truth so that on your computer are your completed files and they've been completely organized, tagged, you know, all the things we'll get into later. These are your MP3s, your waves, and your, the, AFs, your your final your final tracks, tracks. that you want to sell and you're going to pitch. Uh, but it starts with you, with your computer, not all oh, I what version is that up there? It you can say to yourself, this thing here, this folder and all of its structure, that is that's my catalog. It's my finished product. That's it's what's on the shelves of my store. But I know what it is and it's right. So we did that by instead of just loading things to the cloud and then worrying about, you know, whether or not you had them right here, there, or the other, we do it on your computer. So your computer has a folder and in that folder is where you write your metadata and you put all your rights and your, and your licensing information. And then we sync it to the cloud. So you have access to it anywhere else, but the, the, your catalog itself is with you. So that was, yeah, that was, and that's particularly different from the way everything else out there operates because we're more concerned about the artist. Our, our, our deal is we want to make this work as a one-stop shop for artists. So that's we're, that's our key focus. Yeah. I, to, to kind of put a little bit more of a, an example on this is that uh, let's say you've got your, you've got your MP3 that you want to pitch and you um Upload it to say say Disco uh, uh, and or and, and by the way I, I love Disco so the, uh, I yeah, I'm, right. I'm totally a fan but it, so you upload to Disco and you do your metadata tagging so now you've got two versions of that audio file you've got your Disco version you've got the the audio file on your hard drive so you're pitching through Disco that's fantastic but if you want to pitch to somebody who isn't on Disco or doesn't use Disco links and they want to they, that actual audio file you're going to be sending it from your hard drive. So, oh, wait a minute. Okay. That does, does that have the metadata on or does that one have the metadata? Okay. Well, let's bring the disco one down and now you've got two and, and then, files on your hard drive, one with there, metadata, becomes, one without. You know, so when you've written yellow brick road <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've got it stored on your computer, you can take it knowing that that version that you have, it's not yellow brick road, something else. And you can push it out to somewhere else and know that it's going to be right. And the metadata will follow it from your hard drive to wherever yeah. you put it. So no, up no uploading, downloading. It's just, you know, you want to put it somewhere else. That's your your point. You want to send it off to a music supervisor. You know that you just go to your drive in track stage. It'll pull it for you. And it's the up-to-date version that you finished. So yeah. Organization. That is so nice because I, as, you know, receiving music for women of substance, I get all kinds of weird versions of tracks people mistakenly send me their track without any vocals yeah. you know because they they get the name mixed up in their hard drive and or yeah, they send me the m4a file that i cannot I use know. see this is the thing it's you know i mean it, the music industry or the film industry this is a business right and musicians are not necessarily or I'm not going to speak for all of them but it's it's not necessarily a, a natural skill to be a business person and so uh our approach is the more that we can uh give you the space to put in stuff that you know you need to have uh then the more secure you can be as a business person and you can show up as a professional and you cannot make those newbie errors or you cannot uh, you can start to build relationships that are very productive and people look at you as a professional as somebody that they want to work with not somebody who's going to make the mistake of not putting their contact information in the metadata or sending the wrong file that doesn't have that metadata. We even got stuff built into the into the system that uh, it'll warn you if you've updated a track with and you haven't tagged the metadata yet. So you know that what you're seeing in your catalog is what's on the file on your hard drive. And also, if you have if you're bringing um, tracks to track stage that already have metadata, that just comes right into track you just stage. Pull it right in. You're not having to re-enter it, so it, it speaks both ways, right? 
So it, it, it really is taking a snapshot, a snapshot of the metadata on the tracks of your, on your hard drive, and then allowing you to attach everything else you need to have around those right in one place. And to, to, to be successful, you need to move forward and generate more catalog and more catalog. And you want to do that in your studio, get that stuff, you know, bounce the final ones and then load them into the system and tag them and organize them and put the rights on them. And because, you know, clearing rights are so important. And, but once it's done, you go, okay, that one's in there. I'll be able to use that from now on, move on to the next one, Um, make it a, a, but that's hard to do without having a centralized place. And with having, um, we've got a lot of processes in place that help you automate and replicate that stuff onto your uh, catalog so that it's easier to do. That's the thing. It's easier to do um, because otherwise you kind of look at it and go, ah, oh, you know, I'm just not spending any time in the studio, you know, or, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I did. I send that Would this helps with all of that. It helps the business side. It does. And it takes, I mean, we're, we've we're only been speaking about the catalog side because that's kind of the meat and potatoes of it. But the fact is, is that you can do pretty much everything from the moment you conceive of a song all the way through to getting a license within track stage. So you can follow that all the way through. We have a, a module that's dedicated completely to moving your tracks through all the various stages to get them to finished and being able to see that at a glance. So you can, you know, I mean, right now, I, I don't know about you, but in my folder, I have like, a, you know, a, a couple dozen uh, subfolders that just have just ideas, right? You know, those chord progressions, that that, that riff, that, you know, something that you go, oh, wait a minute, this could be something great, but I'm working on something else right now. Well, you can have all of your prod- projects in every stage of development laid out in front of you visually, and you'll know exactly where they are, what stage of development you're not going to be. You're going to see where you're, that all these are just concepts. All of these are the ones that are right now we're in mixing, all these ones in mastering, so on and so forth. And each of those stages have checklists that you can completely customize. So you can Mm. create your own workflow and say, all right, you know what? Okay, I know I need to do this, 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 and this, and then this is ready to move to that stage. So it helps you actually drive more tracks across the finish line. See where that low-hanging fruit is. More tracks across the finish line, more tracks in your catalog, more tracks to pitch better chances of getting your sinks. Mm-hmm. So it, and then from the, from beyond the catalog, then we also have the ability for you to target uh, the right opportunities, pitch to those supervisors or those libraries, and then track all of the, how those people interact with your tracks once you've sent them to them. So, and ultimately record those licenses when you win. Mm. So it literally takes you from concept to license. Yeah, all, wow. all the four cornerstones, I would say, because you you start with creative, as we call it, which is your development cycle, which Rubina just sort of laid out. And then when that development cycle is finished, it moves into the catalog. And that's where you make sure that your metadata and everything and your rights and splits are in place. That's the second one. The third one would be targeting and pitching, which is where you can uh, reach out and actually start to sell your catalog. And in, and do follow up on that, which is the sort of the final one, which is follow up and licensing. You know, when you hit that home run, and little funny things come up on the screen. <laughs> the, those are the four pillars to get from. I'm I'm writing something as a musician all the way through to. Yeah, I made the sale. You know, and, and I'm glad he kind of said the funny things. He he threw this kind of stuff in. And it's actually, it's great, you know, because as creatives, you, you know, it is 99% work and 1% celebration when it comes to actually, you know, landing those gigs. And so we want to celebrate those moments and we want to create an interface that's fun. Yeah. I like that. I love that you put that in there because it's true. We don't always celebrate ourselves. Okay. I want to get into the pitching part in a minute, but I wanted to ask about, so you basically it's, you can take a track all the way through from beginning to end, which I love. Does it have, does it attach like say maybe older mixes to the to the same track, you know, different dem like the demo versions. And then does it attach like all of the stems and things like that all in one kind of area for that track? 
Yeah. You can attach anything to the project going through. So not only can you attach all of your, your mixes, but you can also attach um, inspirational images or, or, or even just voice memos or lyric sheets. Um, you can literally anything that you, that you are assembling, instead of just having them all sitting on your desk in places and sticky notes, you can have them attached to that project as it goes through. And then once it gets into the catalog, our catalog does support alternate mixes and stems all kind of rolled up into the primary mix. So it's very easy to say, oh, you know what? I need to pitch this particular, I, the, just the instrumental version, not the vocal version. Or the okay. holiday version. Or, or the holiday version, you know, and, and have that all kind of rolled up very easily into that that single track in your catalog. That's nice. Yeah, I think I think anyone that works on uh, sync needs that for sure. <laughs> so let yeah. me ask about disco since you mentioned disco, because a That's lot true. of the musicians I work with, you yeah. know, they do use disco. Yeah. They don't know about track stage yet. Yeah. And yeah. you're a fan of disco, but like what does disco not have that you guys have? Okay, so if, if there were a, there's a Venn diagram of 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 disco and and track stage overlap. So where um and and so that's that Venn diagram overlap is in the catalog area, catalog, and then to to metadata provided you're doing the upload and download with disco, tagging that sort of stuff, and they do have some support, I believe, for um for at least recording splits, uh, ownership rights. Um, but their real focus is the music supervisor that they they are that is their wheelhouse. They are supporting the music supervisors to find music. And so they the adding on the um, musicians to that serves serves that purpose. serves that big sure. side. And, and it does also serve the musician. It's a great way to kind of put through to to get through to those supervisors. Now, the Venn diagram on the track stage side is we go the opposite direction. As I think Scott kind of alluded to earlier, we focus on the artist. So all of our focus is about the artist, the artist, the artist. And with the with that overlap of the pitching and the um and the development catalog the creative side. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm saying the Venn the, the, the crossover with, with disco is the catalog and the, oh, well, the crossover. Yeah. yeah. Um so we 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 kind of fill in all the blanks that disco doesn't have. Uh, we do have um, the ability to upload directly to Disco. To your, if you have a Disco account, you can upload your 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 files into your own playlist really easily. Bring all of your metadata that you created in Track Stage right into Disco, and you can pitch from there. Um, uh, also, we have we have support to enable you to send to any Disco playlist uh, when you're pitching. Uh, a, so if you have a super Supervisors URL, you can pitch directly to them through track stage and, and all of that works. Um, the one thing that we've got that's a little bit different is like not every music supervisor out there is on disco and libraries aren't on disco and publishers. And, you know, so so where they serve the music supervisor realm exceedingly well and have, a you know, a well-deserved reputation there's a big gap. There's a big gap when it comes to musicians, especially, um, well, I wouldn't say especially instrumentalists, but who are focusing more on the library side or the sync agent side. Um, you can, through track stage, you can send uh, streaming links and downloadable links, play, create playlists and send them to anyone. Um, and then track when they listen to it, track when they open it, when they download it, how many times they've listened to it. All of that is right in. So to circle back to the initial question of, you know, we we believe we play nice with Disco mm -hmm. if, if people want to use it. And we've made it easy uh, for you to load your uh, content if you want your tracks to your accounts. You can just dis disperse them from there or directly to another person's account, uh, supervisor, et cetera. So. There we go. Got it. Okay. So how do you guys, does your, um, does track stage like bring the, the, the briefs or the things that people are looking for, whether it's supervisors or libraries or they, does it, does it connect those things with the users or where do they go to find those? Okay. So as far as, um, there are a few different places to get, or lots of places to get briefs. We don't have um, built-in access, or, or at this stage, we aren't connected directly to briefs, just the ability to submit to them. However, 
um, for those who use taxi, uh, we are going to be, there's a development for our dashboard that is, there is, sorry, there's a widget in under development for our dashboard, which will pull in the taxi fee, uh, taxi feed and allow you to select which briefs that you want to then populate into your, in, into track stage and, and, and pursue. But we are not that this is a you know, this is definitely a, a a differentiation is we aren't at this point a brief house that's not what we're about we are about the catalog and about the managing of the assets and and submitting for sure but we're not the pipeline in so to to further that point um as I said, uh, playing nice with uh, Disco, we, we make it easy. We facilitate using Disco. The same is uh, imminent coming with uh, with Taxi because they have their house set up or the system set up in a way that makes it quite convenient. You will be able to scroll through those Taxi briefs, pick one, and and so we're going to make it easy to work for Taxi. You know, work with Taxi because those briefs will be available to us already. We're just going to imp- Implement them so that you can pitch to them. Um, basically, grabbing it from here and integrating it into our system. I, I think the way to, to kind of look at this is that um, similar to regular the regular business world, uh, a CRM or a sales pipeline does not actually give you the opportunities. What yeah. it does is it allows you, it gives you all the tools that you need to find, research, produce, you know, or, or pursue those opportunities, but it's not going to feed them to you. you it's 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 just a, a place to house everything you do for your business. Mm-hmm. And and uh we do facilitate the that research process in a way so that mm-hmm. you're not um spamming or carpet yeah. bombing people with inappropriate tracks. Because you know, pick the ones that actually match them by doing the research, recording it, being organizing, knowing, knowing that this particular individual or this particular firm is in a particular genre. Right? And so you can search through your stuff and find out the ones that will be appropriate. Yeah, and submit those. It can be, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, sweetheart. Um, it, 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 it can be, <laughs> it's a sobering thing for musicians to realize just how much of a business this is. And so I don't want to, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to throw it out there and, and sugarcoat this and say that there isn't a lot of work and somehow track stage is going to make no more work. That's not the case. Tracks, it, it is going to always be a lot of work. And unless you have a publisher or manager who's doing this work for you, it, it takes time, especially in the beginning, to build up those connections, to build those relationships. Once you build those relationships, once you've done that initial work, then it starts feeding you back. And I kind of want to circle back to that whole Aladdin thing. Um, I, I had an interesting conversation online with somebody in a forum a few days ago, and it really kind of twigged this for me is, is you know, they said, well, if you've got great music, you'll be found. No, you you really won't. And and it's too much music. There is kind of yeah. I mean, what is something like one hundred and sixty thousand tracks or sixty thousand tracks a day or something like that get uploaded? But um, it's it, it really does require you building relationships. I as an actor uh, got limited success through having an agent who would do the work for me. Um, the the bottom line is that uh, they will never care as much about your career as you will. No representative could possibly care as much about your career as you do. So it, you have to kind of be the driving force in that. And so uh, my biggest successes in my acting career, without a doubt, came just from people I knew. Mm-hmm. I had a connection with with a, a, a former teacher who then told me about a play that was auditioning and, and gave me a good word to get in for an audition. So I got to audition for a professional play. And when I got that, the stage manager was uh, of that production was was a production, uh, was working on the production of Aladdin, told me about that audition, got that arranged. It was only through my relationships that I was actually able to get the 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 big thing in my in my acting career. And the same thing happens with the with music in in the film industry it's relationships 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 build those relationships show up as a professional show up as somebody that they can trust because believe me their careers are on the line big money big pressures they need somebody who's going to show up as a pro they don't want to hold your hand mm-hmm. so you show up you build that relationship and once you break that ice and you really build it, it just takes a couple of sinks and then people start to see you as oh yeah no 
go to this guy, this guy, and then your job gets easier. It is front loaded effort though. It is front loaded effort. And in that relationship management, you do need to be organized to try to make sure you follow up and you do need to have your ducks in a row in your track so that they will be seen uh, on libraries and things like that. So being a professional and organized about that is key to be able to manage the relationships and not blow them up. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. um, And this is, uh, and sync is, you, you hear it, you'll hear it from industry gurus that you can't screw up initially. Uh, You don't, you want to do it right because then they go, yeah, that person, uh, Brie, she's fantastic. She's got herself sorted and we'll, let's go back to her. You know, let's keep her in mind for the next project. Like you even said, you get the wrong mixes, you know, when, when people are submitting to you. So I now, now, and so that's wasting your time. That's right. But what about, what about that music supervisor who, you know, takes a chance on your, on your track and, and submits it and okay, we're going to license it. And then you don't actually have your rights in place properly or you, or, or, you, cleared or, yeah, or, yeah. or you didn't get, yeah, you didn't get the proper clearances. You didn't have all that ready to go, ready to go when they needed it. Now that supervisor is not going to be using you again. No. So you, yeah, no, when that happens on my end and like, I have to chase somebody down for the right kind of track, I remember them, but in a bad uh-huh. way, you know well, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's about about to be they're, like, they're okay, I'm not, I'm they, yeah, and they submit again. Okay, no. Yeah. And, and the people making the decisions are not heartless. They just just that they need to get it done. They need to get it done it's now. Busy. And so they're right. really busy. And there's other stuff. So are like, okay, fine, we're moving on. That's you just got to be, you know. They say, well, we need your, and you're like, ah, uh, why well, just uh, give me? No, you got to have it sorted. Got to be sorted and ready. Yep. 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 And I'm glad that you said, you know, you're not trying to be everything to everyone. Cause I think when people try to do that, when any software tries to do that, they always fall down in certain areas and it's frustrating because they tell everyone they can be everything to everyone, but then they really can't. So this I would is- rather it'd be like, you are focused on the arch- artist end, their, their catalog, having it be professional, you know, the whole, um, you know, from, beginning to end of their track like you know who you are you're not like and we're going to go out and find you all the you know opportunities out there like I'm glad you're not doing that because then you spread yourself too thin and it's not as good as it's supposed to be that's not our wheelhouse our wheelhouse is making sure we've given you all the tools that you need to to carve out your business um and, and to find those opportunities uh you know research uh, is is a critical component of of building relationships, and uh, so our our job is just to give you uh, a, a, the tools to make sure that you've got your ducks in a row. And uh, I, I I can tell you right now, we are not the solution for somebody who just wants something really, you know, easy. I'm going to just check one box and I'm done and I'm professional. Well, it, the, that's you, not what this you is. You have to do the work anyway. You, have to do you, the work. you need to do the work, and we support that environment completely we are a professional grade tool so it's similar to you know a dog you're going to eat you, what you put in is what you're going to get out that's the same thing with track sage we're effectively a daw for the business side of your career hmm. that's an interesting way of thinking about it a daw for the business side i like that. <laughs> so let's just say let's just say i find an opportunity um yeah. you know it's it's some somebody i know has passed on to me okay i know that this supervisor is looking for songs so then what would be kind of the workflow of what I would do if say I have this person's email address now, how would I go into track stage and, and initiate this contact? Do you want me to do it? Oh, you do. Okay. So uh, we have, uh, out, as I said, we have our catalog module, our creative module, which we talked about, but the other two modules are targets and pitches. So uh, you, that music supervisor would be a target. So target is uh, any professional that you'd be pitching music to. So you would create that contact in your in your database and in, in track stage, and you'd label them as a target. And then we have um, we have a tab that's attached to that tar- target where you can fill in all of your research. So you could put in the research about what genres they're looking for. You can put in what um, you can put in the information that you have learned. About about that music supervisor so you can open up a good conversation you know past projects past projects have they been you know quoted online in anything recently you know did they win any awards that you could comment on things like that to kind of build out that 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 understanding of that target and that relationship 
and then you would create the opportunity. So if you know that they're only lo they're looking for a particular project and you know they have a description of what of what they're looking for, you if you create that that opportunity in there, once you hit the pitch button, it will actually look through your catalog and it's going to pull out, it's going to highlight all the tracks that contain the same, that are the same genre or have the same keywords. If you have put your keywords on your homework and put your keywords on your tracks. And production style. Production style, like, cue type, yeah, sounds yeah, like, cue. all of that. The more information you put into the metadata on your tracks and your catalog, it'll match up what you put in your description of that target or that opportunity. And it's going to highlight, it's going to say, you know what, these tracks might be your best bet because they match what this person is looking for. And so it's not just send them anything, but send them what they're actually looking for. And still flexible. That if, You still can. You know what, yeah. I mean, I've done the work on that one. This one, I know this one also fits. You can, it'll be right there in the list. You know, you can add another one and then boom, then you can pitch. And then you can pitch it. Now, um, let's just say you could pitch it via email. So that's going to create a playlist uh, that has all of your, your personal uh, or your professional information on there and your links. Mm -hmm. It's going to have your, um, and it's going to have the, the, the playlist that you have there that the, they can play it or they can download it. Um, they can read your bio, all of this on the nice, you know, playlist page. As soon as they do that, you're going to get a yay real time and track stage that yay they've listened to my track yeah. yes so that's we, what we want <laughs> so we track when when they've um when we see that they've got the email and received and opened it and then we track that they've gone to the pitch page which is the share link which is what you're used to seeing and then we track when they listen to it and then we track when they download it so, and we track every time they listen to it as well. Yeah, so you, so can, you can see if they're listening to it over and over and over again, you know that they're interested in it. And so that can help you tailor your follow-up. Mm -hmm. So we also have follow-ups built into the system. So our you can set a date when you want to follow up with them. And that's going to give you a reminder in your dashboard that it's time to follow up with this person. And then we provide, we actually provide email templates, both for the initial pitch and for the follow-up. Um, they're simply... They're, they're, they're kind of prompting you to create your own, but at least it gives you something to work with because that blank screen can be really intimidating oh, yeah. sometimes. So to, to have a little nudge in the direction of, of the kinds of things you might want to say um, can, can be helpful for some. And, and we're, we're specifically speaking about uh, doing it via email. When you're doing the pitch, you get uh, a few options. Mm -hmm. One is the full-fledged, which is the email, which then goes out to them uh, with the template and they can then click on it. Or you can just uh, tell it to create the playlist link page because you might want to share it. The person's in a hurry and they wanted you to text it to them. You can send it to them that way. Or you might want to send a different th a different email or something like that. You want to do your own. You'll get this link that you can work with. You can also, um, another tar uh, end result for that is to send it to Disco. Uh, so you can move it to a Disco to their account. Or, or and, the, and the final one at this juncture is... Uh, you know, you're uploading it to a library where you're going to, what it does is then it, you know, you've got this big catalog and we literally have it pop open a window and go, Hey, here's the tracks, here's the tracks, tracks that you just selected and you can take them and upload them to the library at that point. Got it. Wow. It's, I love that you are tracking the email because I think that's where people are just like, I have no idea if I send this email into the abyss, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did you, they even yeah. get it. Yeah, <laughs> even exactly. It. Yeah, Exactly. exactly. Yes, you've definitely yeah. talked to artists. That's where you get all these ideas, right? <laughs> yeah, because the pain is real. Uh, it, it's a hard road, but it's a worthy road. It really is. Yeah. yeah. So I know you guys have been doing uh, like a beta over the yeah. past year with some artists. And, you know, what kind of things have come up with them? Have you built in new things because of what artists have, g have given you? Oh, without a doubt. Oh, without a doubt. I, I mean, we, we, we actually, we, so we launched our creative and our catalog full versions um, a year ago, a uh, year ago next month. And then we have just wrapped up the beta testing for the targets, pitches, licenses, and our new dashboard, which is like... Yeah. You can see everything. You can do all sorts of goal setting and stuff. All right, goal in setting, dashboard. charts, what's what's been trending, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it really gives you a picture of your whole business. But um, we certainly have gotten, there have been so many changes that we have, the tweaks and things we've added. We've added 
uh, support for collaboration in our creative module uh, with file transfer. You can do like live file transfer. So you don't actually have to leave track stage to go to Dropbox or to, to we transfer when you're working with somebody um, you can live. Send it through track you can just send it through track stage. Um, we've had uh, all, all of our all of our ideas tend to be, if not vetted through, they come from the sync musician community. And uh, I, I, you know, you know you've done your job right. We, we had a little celebration yesterday as we were going through our beta um, re responses. And you know people are, are have been pretty uniformly um, excited and blown away and know these these aren't our cousins and our sisters and our in-laws. I mean we're, we're, we're dealing with with strangers who are, who are sync musicians who are coming in and using this and going, wow. Um, but uh, when they say, you know, it'd be real because they're new to the program. So it's, it's, I, I love it when they say, oh, you know, it'd be great if you could do this or you could do that. I'm like, yeah, we already do. Yeah, it's there. You just go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I thought of that, but that's great. Awesome. But, but you know, you're on the right track when but, that happens. Yeah. And, but, you know, through the entire process, and it's been a couple of years, uh, we, we've been very responsive to, you know, uh, you know, hearing new nuggets of ideas that will come through. Uh, I don't know, pseudonyms, you know, artist pseudonyms. We didn't think that we'd throw them in there and yep. you can pick from them because you may pseudonym and track one way and another right. one. So these ideas, they're just, that's a small example of, of the kind of things that would come up. How we have all the different ways of replicating and duplicating data. We've, man, it's just grown so much and what you can do now. But it's all came from people go, you know, but when I want to be able to do this, and we're like, okay. Yep. Let's go figure that out. Custom fields, custom fields yeah, that was, custom was in fields, there. Yeah. That was a, that was somebody. God, there's been so many, I can't been, remember. Them. I know, I know it's been a long time, but yeah, no, there's that. And that's, that is part of our, our culture. Um, our culture here is to, to deliver the tools that are, are, our, our musicians want and uh and if some if somebody is saying something that we've really kind of missed oh my gosh you know like like uh somebody suggested something great uh the other day and it was it's something that we toyed with and mo it, it just confirmed that we need to move down that line but future modules to support um capturing the pro royalties uh mm -hmm. as as a means so that you can have a financial component to it so that sort of stuff we, you know this is it's not a um this is this is going to be an ongoing journey. You know, we have a very a very solid solution right now as it is, and we're going to continue to to move and develop as the sync artists. Um, and they will direct where we go from here, uh, what they need for their careers, especially as technologies change. And yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we we go in phases, and we're not done. We've got at least twenty milestones. <laughs> wow, of of things that uh, we just know will our, our our goal is to make the artist's job easier to do, make their business run, and make, that that's our goal. Yep, make them confident as business people beyond just confident as musicians. Well, I think you're already definitely doing that. And as you keep listening to the artists, I can't wait to see what other things you guys add. Is there anything we haven't covered? that you want to make sure that people know about track stage? Uh, well, uh, yeah, the one thing that we haven't covered yet is the the, the support. Um, I, like I said, this is no this is no small fluffy piece of program. This is equi the equivalent of a doll. So there is a learning curve and we get that. And so we are extremely responsive, helping people through this. We have got full knowledge-based tutorials. I'm continuing to, to produce new videos step-by-step, step. but beyond that, we are it, we don't give you a bot to chat to. You, you get us. When you hit the chat button down at the bottom of the screen, you get us. And you know, when, when there are too many of you than there, than there are of us, we will make sure we always have people who really understand what they're doing there. We're not gonna just be bots. Um, and so we we are very committed to helping people of all levels of tech savviness to get up and running and confident with with the software. Uh, and uh, as most people who are saying is they when they come in, you know, they say that uh, uh, the support is exceptional and that uh, once they once they get the hang of it, suddenly the things that took them so long to do with all these other different programs take a fraction of the time when once they get over that initial learning curve. Wow. Well, I think anyone that's listened all the way to this point is like so excited to try out <laughs> track stage. So how do they how do they go and jump in and try it out? 
Sure. You go to mytrackstage.com and you can just sign up from there uh, and uh, we'll just get you, we'll get you set up and we'll get you going. And we will, like I said, you can use it absolutely free for two weeks. Yep. Well, I, well, I think we need to increase that, but mm-hmm. that's a discussion that uh, is ongoing at this point. <laughs> As of now, yes. As of now. There is a free trial of some sort. Yeah. There is a, yeah, there is a free trial. There, a, a, Yeah, a, at least two weeks, but we can talk. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm responsive for that too. Yeah, we I are. love it. So mytrackstage.com. Yes. Mytrackstage.com. Mytrackstage.com. Cool. Well, I... Uh... I can vouch for all the, you know, all the features that we just talked about and everything, but I can vouch for you guys as people. I have known for you for two years. You are, you, you do what you say you're going to do and you've, you've seen this through and I'm so impressed being the fact that I met you when you were in such early stages. It's just so cool to see like like a baby is born, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, thank you, Bree. Thanks, Bree. It's so cool having you in our court. I tell you, it's it's amazing. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for telling everybody about Track Stage. And is there anywhere they can find you? Are you guys on socials? Uh, yeah, yeah, we do have a, a website. Or we do have a Facebook page, Track Stage, and we do have a YouTube channel as well. So if you yeah. just do a search for those, you'll find us. Lots of good videos on, on Track Stage on YouTube. Oh, good idea. I love when the tutorials are on YouTube. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. And I hope everybody goes to mytrackstage.com and checks it out. Thanks so much, Bree. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.